Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. We're going to check inside some of the uh, double brood chamber hives that we've got here in Hamden. Uh, these are the ones that I'll be putting nukes over later in the year. Part of the preparation, preparation for winter really starts, really gets started in August. You want to have your mite treatments done. We haven't done the mite treatments in this yard yet because our samples have been very low for mites. But I fully expect to next week, possibly the week after. Given the weather we have, I fully expect to also use HopGuard instead of Formic Pro in this yard. Anyway, what we want to do is check to see how some of our double brood chamber colonies are doing. And uh, we'll have a look at this one. We want to put some smoke on there, Jordan. And we will have a look on how things are going on in these yards. Okay. So I can't stand on the other side of the hives because there's nukes in the way there. But let's have a quick look at our colony here. We're starting to get a honey flow here now. Although you wouldn't tell, you wouldn't know from this honey super because there's next to nothing in this one. So this colony may not be huge. A bit more smoke in here, please, Jordan. Thank you. Oh, having said that, there's a good 10, 10 pounds of honey in here, maybe 15. The bees aren't... Oh. Yeah, this they're collecting some honey, all right. And we'll throw a bit of smoke on top here, please, Jordan. Thank you. Okay. So the queen's got free reign to go in both brood chambers here. We've rearranged a few frames to try and get them to build out some comb. I see this frame is foundation in the middle. I don't see much progress on that yet, but let's see how the upper brood chamber is looking. I, in the summertime for my double brood chamber hives, I almost never go into the lower brood chamber. Actually, Jordan, if you don't mind, you wanted to bring the cameras and bring right close up where we get the opportunity to. The normal pattern that I would expect to see in a upper brood chamber is honey on the outsides and brood in the middle. And at this time of year, we're gradually changing from having a priority of um, brood production to honey production. Now, we're just coming out of a dearth, so I'm not expecting to see a lot of honey production yet. I'm still expecting to see us peaking out of brood production because we've had a very lean period and during that lean period they eat honey resources. When they eat honey resources this gives the queen more room to lay. If you have a race of bee which is inclined to lay when there's a dearth, like Italians, um, then you will have much more brood developing at this time. Now if you put the camera over my shoulder, I don't know if you can see how shiny this is, but this is actually pretty full of honey. Uh, I don't know if you can see the reflection. I'll turn it this way. You might see the light better. Yeah. Plenty of honey here. So the outside comb didn't have some, but this has plenty. <laughs> this feels intermediate, so it feels like there'll be honey on this side, and I'd be wouldn't be surprised to see brood on this side. But no, a bit more honey. But I put a frame of foundation here some time ago, which is a tiny bit built and being built on this side. Now that we're getting into a honey flow, I'm fairly confident they will build this comb out. This is not one of my colonies that was being fed. So any colonies that were not being fed during the dearth, they won't build any comb at all. Um, but now that we're getting into a honey flow, and you can start to see that they're storing some honey, they should start to build comb again as well. Now we've got food stored here and empty space, so I can't quite see whether I've got eggs in there or not. I don't think we've got eggs in there yet. But there's pollen stored here, which would infer that we're on the edge of the brood chamber upstairs. <clears throat> And here we have some lovely brood, lovely capped brood here. 
on both sides. A little bit of open brood around it, not much, a little bit. So that's one frame of brood up here. Another frame of pollen. It's mostly honey. Some drone brood around the edges. Bit of emerging cat brood there. Now during the dearth, a lot of races of bee, and I, I'd say Saskatrans is in that group, um, they will cut down on brood production. They don't stop brood production, but they'll certainly cut down. A race like the, um, like the uh, Russians will stop altogether. Now I have a reason why we haven't got, I haven't been seeing much young brood here. I've got a new queen here. They've clearly just recently superseded this queen and I've got a virgin queen right here. This colony hasn't swarmed. There's no swarm signs of swarm cells anywhere, but we've got a virgin queen running around here. So if you want to get close up there, that's a virgin queen, relatively short abdomen, very active on the comb, running around a bit. There's no signs of queen cells up here. There's probably one or two open queen cells down in the lower brood chamber, but she's not laying yet. And so they're, they're fairly recent. We've got lots of cat brood in here still. And with a queen running around, this is, I'm 99% certain what we have is a supersedure queen who will probably be laying by next week. We've got some very good mating weather coming up. So we're not gonna disturb this any further, but what we know is we've got a couple of frames with some cat brood in, one full of cat brood, maybe two. Um, plenty of honey in here, plenty of pollen. We've got a queen now, and she's got a very good chance of getting out there and mating if she hasn't done already. And uh, things should develop with this colony pretty well. So this colony, given the amount of honey up here, this, I would say two thirds of this is full of honey. This colony is well on the way towards being ready for the winter time. Usually I'd say in the 1st of September, if I've got five or six frames of brood up here, that's just a little bit higher than I want to see. I'd want to see four, three or four frames of brood um, up in the upper brood chamber come early September. And that's a clear sign to me then that I won't need to feed. Um, but you do have to keep an eye on what the honey flows are doing. Um, this colony is well on the way to being in that state because by the time this queen is laying and given that there's a honey flow at the moment, a lot of this space upstairs is going to be filled up with honey. So I certainly want to make sure there's room above them for them to put more honey upstairs um, in the honey super because I don't want them backfilling the brood chamber any more than they need to because I'll still want this brood chamber being filled up with brood before the uh, winter time comes so that they're in the process of changing over that brood, the uh, producing those winter bees. So whilst we have a new queen in here, that's great. We want, if you have a good colony, you want, and if you have a good colony with a good queen, supersedure is actually a good thing because you know what, you know you're getting the daughter of an extremely good queen. Mm -hmm. Supersedure cells, they usually do a very good job mm -hmm. of producing a good queen. There's still plenty mm -hmm. of drones out there right now, so I've got little doubt that she'll mate successfully, but I'll keep an eye on it because there's always a chance that she doesn't mate successfully. But that's one reason why I produce lots of late summer nukes, because if, if we do have a problem, I can put a new, mm -hmm. new queen in here right away through by putting one of my new nukes in there. So this looks good. Let's have a look inside another double brood chamber colony. Let's look at a slightly bigger one. Let's look at that predominantly green one over there. 
uh, pink and green and red. Here's another double brood chamber colony. They're getting busier now. They've stopped clustering at the entrance. The bees are starting to bring in some food resources. So the honey flow is getting going for today. You may want to change, move your position because you're blocking traffic to that hive there, Jordan. We've got uh, quite a bit of um, honey storage capacity on this hive. Let's see if they've been using it. Well, we've certainly got the population to, to store plenty of honey. Just by the look of it, I would say that they're filling these supers up with honey quite nicely. You don't really need to go through the frames of a honey super to tell how, much, how well they're filling them up. You should usually be able to do it by weight. Or if you've, if you've done it for a while, you can certainly do it by weight. I usually save a lot of time. I don't usually go through honey super frames anymore. As a hobbyist, I always used to do it. I used to love doing it because I used to love seeing all the honey they're producing. But basically, you can get just as much information by doing that. And I can tell right now, there's a good 30 pounds of honey in here, and it'll only hold 35. So this super is pretty full. We're ready for another honey super on this hive. This deep brood chamber, looking closely in the top, you can see how they've drawn the comb. There, you can see the foundation, the um, comb is drawn right out, especially where we put foundation in between frames. They haven't quite built out the foundation, but uh, again, rather than going through all the frames to see how much honey is in here, I should be able to tell by lifting it whether it's full or not. And the empty ones are this one and this one these and that one these are three frames of foundation maybe four the other frames look pretty full of honey this has also about 30 odd pounds of honey in it so this super and that super are about the same in terms of how much honey are in there so it's looking good now into the brood chamber You may be wondering, if you have a look closely down here, you see these things, they, you might wonder what these are. They look like berries. Well, actually, these are pieces of drones because clearly when we put that this queen excluder in, there was some drone larvae upstairs, and here's one of those drones who are trapped. Drones are too big to go through the queen excluder. So a drone that dies up above the queen excluder has to be taken apart to be removed from it. <laughs> so those are bits of drones that never made it out to find a queen, poor things. As if a drone's life isn't hard enough. Who'd be a drone? There we are. So, this upper brood chamber looks great. I can see honey at the top of the frames. Bit of space with foundation on this one here, but otherwise this looks pretty full. This uh, brood chamber is Got a lot of food in it. Full of honey and pollen. A few drones. Good healthy colony. A healthy colony that's not been starving will have plenty of drones in it this time of year. If they've been starving, they'll have been kicking their drones out. So if you've got drones in your hive, your bees have been pretty healthy over the summer, to some degree. And of course they're producing drones here as well. Look, they're still producing some drones here, some emerging right here. But plenty of worker brood coming through as well. 
So we're only the two second frame in. We've got lots of cat brood here and lots of young open brood as well. So there's one frame of brood. Mostly honey and pollen on this one. I'm going to move this to the outside now that they've drawn the comb. Keep the brood together. Some of these frames have been rearranged in order to for me to accelerate the drawing of comb. Lovely frame of brood here. Nice emerging brood. Nice shiny white larvae around it. So this is a sign of a good, healthy brood chamber producing plenty of bees surrounded by plenty of food. And that's key. After a dearth, if you have lots of food around your brood and it's nice and shiny and wet looking, your bees have come through that dearth really nicely. Lots of brood of all stages here. That's three. But every frame also has a fair amount of honey on it too. It's another comb that I just had drawn out, mostly honey. Don't worry, I'm not worried about these queen cups. Queen cups get built all the time. But I'm going to put this in the outer edges as well. I'm not going to separate things out of my brood chamber now. I'm looking to prepare, collect consolidate things so the brood is nice and together surrounded by pollen surrounded by honey there are this frame is full of eggs so lots of emerging brood here emerging workers here and this area is full of eggs and this side lots of emerging brood population growing nice and quickly that's four frames of brood there's a fifth frame of brood, but they're really backfilling this with honey now. On the other side, there's, and there's a lot of brood on this side here. So that's five frames of brood in the upper brood chamber. And they're busy building comb out here. So this colony is coming along very nicely. We've got... Uh, storage and comb being built here. I may have been a little early putting my honey supers on, but look how well developed those honey supers are. I've been getting them to draw the comb out here and they're doing it. So this super here is about half brood, half honey, maybe, yeah, about half brood, half honey, which is exactly where I'd like to see them right now. That's where we're only in the middle, in just getting into the middle of August now. Things are looking great. I don't need to go into the lower brood chamber to see. This is in great shape. So our queen excluder can go back on. And our honey supers can go back on. I'll let them continue to do a great job filling them up. bees pouring in the entrance. Uh, we're unblocking the air traffic control. So this room, this is the equivalent of a one super of honey in one empty box. So I'd say we could leave it for a little bit longer. Uh, considering that this comb to be built in here, but I'd say within a week, if we have a honey flow, we'll want more space on here. So uh, we'll probably do that in about a week's time. So, two colonies, looking at the two double deep brood chambers. They look pretty much on schedule. One of them was requeening, um, but they're Still, still plenty of strength. They've successfully reared a new queen. Question is, will she get out and mate? But within a week, we should know. And this colony clearly is just roaring along and will probably produce a bit more honey than the other one. 
because, uh, well, first of all, it already has, but secondly, it's still got its queen laying flat out. So things are going well in my uh, Hamden yard. Uh, I will look at more hives and let you know if there's anything else to report. I'm Peter Cannon, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.